grab it. Now I'm going to come through and grab his arm. While I was grabbing it, there was a raking bat knuckle, like a raking hammer. His resistance is going to help me get to here and protect myself right here for the check. But also, if he turns and tries to hit with that arm, I already have his check right If he hits with the groin and we grab after we do that, we're going to pull ourselves into this bathroom. So you have to get used to doing one together with settling into your stance right here. Alright? Two all by itself. Just turn the hand the other way and anchor your elbow. Alright? Push your arm out towards me. Push it. Come on. Alright? I'm in a pretty good position of strength and he's stronger than I am. Alright? Had I kept my hand arm this way, he would have moved my arm. I cannot resist that. Pretty good control on that, right? And then from here, I, you know, I can use that energy against them as this comes over and checks them. I might do that next move. It's a real nice way to actually take advantage of his resistance. We should do that with this quick flip right here of the forearm because that's how we get roundhouse punch. I mean, that's how we get overhead punch, and we'll do an overhead punch. So let's get away from this, right? Yeah, sure, you can, you can do just about anything. You have that. You can side kick the guy in the body or <laughs> kick his legs. There's so many things you can do. But now it's different, and a part of a sudden switch, right? That's the more street smart overhead punch now that we're talking about. Contact. One is the face and one is his upper arm, right? We talked about this before. So what's unique about the block and circles of protection is that I'm affecting his upper arm. Where usually, you know, in an extended outward block, you were affecting his forearm, right? And a hook punch too, it affects his forearm. If you did the upper arm, you're still gonna get hit, right? Okay. Um, and of course, on the outside, it's typically the upper arm, but on the inside, it's typically not. So now as you flip over to an overhead punch, I'm gonna control your upper arm. 
And that's what makes this technique so uniquely different. Right here, it is this forward angle, bracing angle of my upper arm that makes sure that not only am I hitting him in the face and not only am I preventing his arm from coming forward, but I'm controlling the rest of his body to stand there like this. Right? Um, move your arm back as much as you want, but try not to step out of your stance. It's kind of hard, right? So in other words, there's an end of range happening. So when you're moving his arm back, even if he moves with it, he kind of ran out of range right now. And if I go any further, the rest of your body is going to have to do some kind of an adjust. Yeah, you have to adjust somehow. Yeah, that arm isn't going to go back there without the rest of your body participating in some way. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Right. So that we're actually controlling two parts right here. Face is, of course, you know, part of that, right? But it's this alignment right here, much like an upward block, that pushes his entire upper body back. Very similar to thrusting wedge, right? Um, a couple other things that are similar. What the other arm is here for is to make sure that while I'm controlling all of this, that the forearm is not giving me any trouble, right? And one thing you have to think about is, well, first of all, he could still poke me in the eye. Right? But also you can wrap around my arm and grab me. knuckling grabbing now I'm gonna come through and grab his arm my base technique right over here back knuckling right here this moment I'm grabbing his arm and then getting his arm which I do via grabbing the wrist and hitting to the ribs <clears throat> that helps me cut the elbow And now I'm going to, you might think, that, well, you might be able to punch you with that. But this is going to be used not just for an attempt to break. Don't stand here and try to break. The way you break, you pull back with the right, obviously, push forward with the left. But that is to control you. Okay? I'm going to move myself into my next position. With this, my left hand is standing out. You're helping me get to here. And the reason why I want to get to here is because I'm going to disbalance you and take your legs out. I'm going to make him step here. I'm going to make him step again here. Okay, there's two times he's gonna have a hard time uh, doing what he wants to do because even if you can handle the pain of everything that happened here, his stance is being disturbed twice. Once, twice, my arm being here, I can now do a really nice back. Okay. So this is one, two, and three, and the last move of the base technique right here, right? From here, my left hand just goes right to his arm. His arm is likely to go up. I'm back like I'm in the face, that's where his arm is gonna be. He's gonna give it to me. So it's almost like I'm doing an extended outward block, right? It's going to be pretty easy from here to get to here. Right? And then I'm just going to find his elbow. That's a shuffle, but not a step forward to shuffle. This is a foot adjustment usually if it's close in, just with the left foot moving over slightly. There's often a need for a slight shuffle forward, yes. Right? But once I'm here, I'm controlling him. I'm not just trying to break the elbow. The elbow strike is a bonus if I can get it in there. Pull him with the right, push him with my left. All right, control the hands. I don't, yeah, I want to make it difficult for him to counter me, right? So, if you're in this position right here, right? This is one control you here, and then taking this leg out right here, and then right from this into the back, right into the claw, to the face. It's a so really nice so move. Up here. Reverse step two. Cross over to some sweep kick. Right, and from here, bam, he's going to get hit with this, and then with that, because the... Where was right the first strike? The ribs. The so back, because I was here. He's helping me back. If I'm here, pulling you like this, this pull helps me with that sweep. Okay? So because I'm feeling him, I can do just about any part of this looking at additional opponents. So the punch, I have to look at you here, but right about here I can start looking at everyone else because I can feel my, his body and feel exactly where he's at for my next move. And I pull his arm, my hand was in this position. That's a nice back knuckle coming up. That's why you do that. And even though I'm going to cross over, my arm is here. Because I was pulling on his arm, my elbow is anchored. So I can turn that, I can turn my forearm from here, back knuckle right in the rib. Beautiful. That's why you're doing the back knuckle. Because of the point of origin provided by my right hand. When I went one, I pulled right here, I kicked his leg out. It's a perfect setup for this back knuckle. 
And once my arm is in this position, the next beautiful strike is this. Right from here, I just turn that right over. If you look at my elbow, my up arm, it tells you most of the story. From here, and that's a very powerful combination. Right there. Can you see that? That's good. Okay? One, two, three. And then from there, you go right into picking that leg out. Yeah, 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 yeah